What's up, -er? My name is Maddie Kaminiak. I'm 29 years old, born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio, now currently living in Las Vegas, Nevada, Sin City. I've been traveling the country for eh, about four and a half years now. I've seen a lot of places and a lot of faces, and it's a beautiful experience. Just also started up a YouTube channel called What's Up Her Entertainment. I'm also a magician, which is one of my favorite hobbies to do. So the content on my YouTube channel pretty much will consist of magic, vlogs, adventure, travel, skits, parodies. At the end of the day, I just like to entertain people. You are now watching The Artist. Let me tell you more. Season 2, episode Deuce Deuce. Let's get it. Um, I started, ooh, I might have been, I might have been like around eight or nine. My dad showed me a self-working mathematical card trick. I remember that. We were at the kitchen table, he showed me, and I was like <laughs> flabbergasted. I didn't know. I was like, I thought it was so cool. And then right after he showed me that simple card trick, it was so funny and ironic, David Blaine, he came out with his first special. I believe it was like 97. Don't quote me on that. I think it was 97. And I fell instantly in love after that. Like, I thought it was crazy the things he was doing at that time. And having a TV show, I was like, oh my God. So I instantly fell in love. And I did it for years, a couple years. And I, I actually did it up until, like, not every day, but I did it up until I was 19. Because I had other hobbies like skateboarding. I was really into skateboarding. And when I was 19, I, I, you know, I hung out with the wrong group of people. And started doing, like, things that you shouldn't do. And fell off on all my hobbies. And just last year, I picked it back up. I was on YouTube, found a magician named Chris Ramsey. Shout out to Chris Ramsey. And and since I'm clean now and I'm in recovery, I started, you know, I picked up my old hobbies where I left them off. Like skateboarding, magic. And magic's my favorite hobby. It's my favorite. And I just picked it up and, and literally hit the ground running with it. And literally every day... I'm spending hours and hours and hours just practicing, 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 and it's so worth it. So, definitely, uh, my first card trick was my dad, but after that, it was definitely Dave and Blaine. There's a lot of great magicians, but I have to go with Dave and Blaine. I mean, what he's done for street magicians, and when he came out with his first few specials back in the late 90s and early 2000s and his endurance feats like he picked up where Houdini left off and he's done miraculous things with his body holding his breath being buried alive being 30 day or 40 days of starvation and and fasting I mean god how can you not love this guy I mean his body is like a test of time it's just crazy. I got to go with Dave and Blaine. But there's a lot of other, you know what I mean, be you know, beautiful, gorgeous, great performers out there that, you know, kill the game in Magic too. But Dave and Blaine is by far my favorite. Facts. Nowadays, back in the day, like if you blew up, like, it, I feel like it was easier to blow up back in the day. Nowadays, everybody's, like, trying to fight for that top of the mountain, and it's literally a job. So, like, I just started, but I, I've been watching YouTube for years, and I know, like, I, I almost got it down to a science. You literally have to, like, dedicate 100% of your time. Yeah, you can work a part-time job, but you literally have to dedicate 100% of your time if you want to succeed in YouTube. If you want to be a YouTuber and, and get sponsors and be like Logan Paul or or any of these big top tier YouTubers, you literally have to put the hard work and dedication in, and it's no joke. Like the editing hours and and finding creative ideas is insane. So it's it's way harder nowadays. I feel like you can get lucky though. You put one. I always say you throw enough dookie balls at the wall, one's gonna stick. But you definitely, yeah, it's very hard nowadays, but it's possible. Anything is possible.
Okay. These are good questions. Um, what I will say is I'm not going to just stick to one category. Yes, I do magic. There will be magic on my channel, but there's so many other things I like. And I don't, a lot of these channels, I know how things work. If You know, I heard this saying a while ago, you'd rather be good at one thing than do a lot of things and be mediocre at it. So, I mean, I see some channels, they do reviews, some channels, they do vlogs. I mean, they stick to what they're good at, but like, I like everything. So, at the end of the day, it's entertainment. So, as long as I'm entertaining you, I mean, one day it could be a vlog, one day it could be a review, one day it could be me performing street magic on the Vegas Strip, I mean, or me traveling, and which is a vlog, I mean, whatever it is, I, I like so many things, so I don't want my channel just to consist of, even my IG account, it consists of everything, like, you know what I mean? I, I, I came a long way, so... The people that I, that do follow me, I mean, you know, I got a baby following. It's small, you know what I mean? They're my friends mostly, but I got a small following that, you know, they love me. And uh, I'm spontaneous, you know, you never know what you're going to get. So, uh, honestly, I would say everything. Everything and anything. That's what you will expect on my channel. It's going to be crazy. One day it might be a vlog, the other day it might be a review. And then the other day, you might be performing magic. The other day, I might be doing some skits or stunts or, or trying to make you laugh. That's the best I could say. That's going to be hard because I'm pretty much an open book. Um, I always say what's on my mind. I'm especially very likely to say anything and everything that's going on on my social media platforms so everybody knows my journey but to be surprised i mean i'm very humble i know it doesn't come off like that because i'm like on my social media platforms you know i try to stay cocky but I, i'm still humble at the end of the day i know where i came from and i'm still there you know what i mean i'm, I'm on the bottom level i've not blown up i've been trying my whole life to do these things and Maybe now, hopefully, we cross our fingers, maybe, that uh, I might get lucky. But definitely, like, being humble. And, I mean, I'm really the nicest guy if you really get to know me. I hate, that's a cliche saying, but a lot of my friends in my circle know that, you know, I do have some spunk, and I have an attitude, and I like to talk a lot. So, it's kind of hard, this question, but... I would, like, I'm very humble, though. Like, I know where I came from. I used to be homeless. Like, when I first moved from Cleveland to Miami, Florida, I used to sleep behind, like, at, I went for recovery. I went to rehab, detox, got out. I was in a place where I didn't know anyone. I was sleeping behind dumpsters on the street. I was sleeping on the beach, you know, for, like, almost a year. So, I mean, a lot of people don't know that. So, like, you know, I'm very humble and I'm very an open book. I I'm not scared of the criticism i'm not scared to be hated on trust me people hate on me every day like in my comments and everything you can't let that get to you but i mean i would say people will probably be surprised that i'm humble because i i talk so much you know crap you know because you got to like you know even though you have those lows you still gotta feel like you know you're worth something like i know i'm worth something i know that i can amount to this it's just about how much hard work do i want to do I don't want to work hard now. Back in the day, I just wanted, you know, you don't get handouts. Especially if you're unlucky. And I don't even believe in luck. But if you don't have things going your way, you're definitely not going to hit the jackpot, if you know what I mean. Hmm. I like that one. If my life was a book, what would it be called? I would say... Hope. Hold on, pain ends. That's an acronym for people that don't like English. Hold on, pain ends, hope. I mean, I look at life, like if you don't have hope, anytime when I was on my lowest, like when I was using drugs and sleeping behind dumpsters and making all these bad mistakes and losing friends and losing relationships, people that I loved, family members, people passing away, I always had hope that I had this goal in mind that 
no matter what happened to me, I know that if I got my foot on the right path, I would not quit and stop. I'm not, I'm not a quitter. I'm a fighter. I will keep believing in hope until the day I die because it, when you don't have any more hope, you have no more reason to live, I feel like. And it kind of reminds me of the movie Shawshank Redemption when he was like Morgan Freeman was telling T Tim Robbins, he was like, hope, hope will get you killed. You know, you don't want to have hope. You know, but like I looked at it like like totally different. Like, if I was in prison, I would want to have hope. You know what I mean? Maybe, but I understand what he was coming from. Like, hope can get you killed. You know, you're you know you don't want to go outside the bounds of like fantasy. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to be like reach things that like are not attainable. So what you want to do is reach a goal that is obtain attainable, and then once you hit that, and then you keep going, and then you get to the point where. When you look back, it's like, oh my God, I, I went all this way and now I'm here. So definitely if I had a book, it would be called Hope. And I actually have a mini movie coming out. I'll talk about that later, but I have a mini movie coming out called Hope. So it's kind of ironic. That's actually a good question. This is my favorite one so far. Oh, wow. That's going to be a hard one. I have so many tricks that I like to do. Favorite? Um, I would say I've been finding myself lately. I always feel like my opener is my favorite because I always like to start with it. And then anything else after that, you have to get the audience intrigued with the first thing you do. It has to be quick. And then anything else, you could just do whatever you want because then you build trust in them like, okay, you know what you're doing. Um, this one is not that quick, though, out of all my openers, but I forget the name that the original person that made this, but the one that made it popular was David Blaine. <laughs> I know, I'm all David Blaine, so I guess you could say I'm riding on his coattail. I don't know, I love him. Uh, it's, called, it's called the Two Card Monty. It's basically like the Three Card Monty. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever been in New York City or Vegas. It's like a scam where like there's three cards, two are jokers, and one's a queen of hearts, and the guy makes you follow the queen of hearts. So they move the cards around and you have to try to follow the queen of hearts. When you think you know where the queen of hearts is, where the money is put down, this is where you lose money. It's a scam, never play it. And right when you think you know where the queen of hearts is, the guy who's doing it is straight gonna hustle you that's not where the Queen of Hearts is. So David Blaine, uh, he didn't make it. I forget the name. The magicians out there are going to kill me, kick my butt. But uh, David Blaine made the trick famous. And I remember watching it, and I had to learn it. And I love performing that trick because it's just, it's for me, it's a good opener for the other magicians out there. It's a good opener for the, you know, you can lead into the ambitious card routine, or you can... Uh, go right into any card to any number. I mean, there's so many possibilities for it, so definitely I would have to say the two card money right now, but there's other ones like card to wallet or or card to impossible location, all those. Giving out secrets, no I'm not, but two card money, facts. There's double, double, double facts. Um, in the beginning, like, not the first time when I started learning when I was, like, 10 to, like, 19. I never got nervous, but I also was, like, drinking a lot and, like, but last year when I picked it back up, I'm not gonna lie, the first time when I was starting to perform in front of people, I was shaky. I couldn't even control my shakes. I was so scared. Like, I don't even know why. I was just so scared, but I came to find out, like, once I got comfortable, with magic, it's okay to mess up because you as the person looking in, like the spectator, the consumer, the customer, you don't know what the ending is going to be. So I can mess up and as long as I keep playing it, you think that's a part of the routine or a part of the uh, shtick, you know what I mean? So I take you on this journey and you don't know what the ending is going to be. That's the cool thing about magic. You don't know what the ending is going to be. I could be showing you something and you don't know what I'm going to do next. 
So you could mess up like three times, but they don't know as long as you just keep the show rolling. So now I don't get nervous because there's so many different ways to escape from a trick. I could literally sometimes I'll mess a trick. Like I remember one time I messed a trick up, totally just forgot about it, went on something else, blew their minds and created a miracle. And they didn't even remember and, and they didn't even know that I messed up. So no, I'm not like, but that's a good question. Like for magicians, like there, you don't know the ending. It's like a bunch of fork in the road, like four away crossings. And you could take all these directions and you could mess up one, but they don't know that and you could take the other way. So definitely that's a good one. Wow. God, I don't even know if I could just answer one person. Wow. That's really hard. Uh, I mean... I could go real, like, and, and shoot high, like Eminem. I love Eminem. But, uh, Nako Bear. I don't know if anybody knows Nako and Medicine for the People. I would love to collab with Nako Bear. Love Nako. I just want to give him a fat hug. Um, who else? Chris Ramsey. I mean, I'll, David Blaine. Definitely would love, love to collab with him. I don't think I could just pick one. I also to watch all the, these other YouTubers that aren't as big, but they're still pretty big. They have like over a hundred thousand subs. Um, Eamon and Beck, um, the Matinees. They used to be called the Minimal Millennials. I would love to uh, work with them. Um, Unbox Therapy, my boy Lou. Um, God damn! I mean, that's a hard one. Uh, I mean, all those people that I just named. I mean, I could, the list could go on, but definitely Nako and Eminem and uh, Eminem Beck and the Matinees and Lou from Unbox Therapy and um, even uh, Conor McGregor. I mean, like, I mean, are we talking about anybody? I mean, I would love to do something with Conor. I mean, I'm a big UFC guy. Uh, God, I don't know. The list could go on and on. I can't just name one. Whatever I said, that that that's good enough for me. <laughs> Well, I don't have much, because you know why? I'm an expiring creator myself. I can give you some life advice. 90% of life is just showing up. Some days I want to go to the gym, but I don't want to. But I go. You know why? It's not the hard part working out. It's the hard part just getting there. 90% of life is just showing up. I've been through my ups and downs, more downs and ups. I, I go through depression. I've been so sad. I lost my dad and the mother of my two kids within a month last October. And it hurt me. And I just took my hobbies. And, and, and I've been doing yoga. And I've been doing all these things. You could do anything that you want. I, I know it's cliche to say. But if anyone tells you you can't do it, that's bull. That's bull. You can do whatever you want. Whatever makes you happy, just do it. Even though if you're not going to make money doing it, just do it as a hobby. Start it off as a hobby, and then you get so good that you can start making money on it. You know, like, like life is way too short to hold grudges, and it's way too short not to live your life. We live to die and die to live. Remember that. We live to die and die to live. Life is way too short. I just want you to be happy. I love everyone. I want everyone to be successful. I love you guys. Thank you, Maria, for having me. Thank you so much. And I want you guys to succeed. Good question. I just started my YouTube channel up. There's a few things on there, nothing great, but it's just brand new. It's called What's Up or Entertainment. I'm just going to have her put the the names of all my social media platforms underneath here but my ig is called maddie g stacks where the g's at all one word i know it's confusing and then my facebook is maddie gaminiac it's gonna be all right here hopefully she'll edit it all nice and neat for me and i want to end on a little different note than the other interview she did because you know i'm a magician so right now it's about it's kind of late 
It is, oh, wow, it's midnight. I just got finished with this. Tomorrow morning is the next time you're going to see me. We're going to end it off on a high note, and you're going to see something cool before we end this video. You guys like gum at all? Because my favorite is Juicy Fruit. But when I want to shake things up, I like to go to Double Mint. But when I want to go to my third favorite, I do that one more time and I like to go to Winter Fresh. But then I like to go to my old high school teenage days and I like to shake that up and go right to Fruit Stripes. The Mojave Desert in Vegas. I got Mocha behind the camera filming. Let's show you guys a quick one. Welcome, I just want you to place your finger on any card that you want. Anyone. You want to change your mind or you're cool with that? I'm cool with that. Right, show everyone at home. Everyone remember, take a picture, whatever you got to do. Take that card back. So this card trick, you only use three cards. One, two, and three. Put the rest in my pocket. You got one, two, and three. This is called the three queen trick. The reason why, because you got a queen on the bottom, you got a queen on top, and you got a queen in the middle. That really doesn't make sense at all because it used to be called a three jack trick because you got a jack on the bottom, you got a jack on top, and you got a jack in the middle. But none of this makes sense because you literally got one queen, one jack, and Malcolm, remember your card from earlier? You have that in the middle. So it really doesn't make sense at all. Love you guys.